Welcome back, Physical Science 20. So we last video we looked at synthesis reactions, so we have to have a little bit to finish up here, and then we'll look at decomposition reactions. So uh, synthesis reactions involving compounds. These can little be a little bit more difficult to predict. Uh, compounds can also participate. So for example, water and carbon dioxide all coming together to make H2CO3 carbonic acid. Now it's difficult to predict what that would, how that happens without using some sort of acid-base indicator. So for example, bromothymol blue, which is blue in um, a basic solution and yellow in an acidic solution could use. And of course, if it turns yellow, that would give us an indication that we are dealing with an acid there. But this is an important reaction here because it happens everywhere. Water combining with CO2 that you and I exhale makes carbon or carbonic acid. So air contains a small percentage of carbon or carbon dioxide. Whenever water is in contact with air, some of the carbon dioxide dissolves in the water and reacts to produce carbonic acid. The synthesis of carbonic acid makes normal rain slightly acidic. The same process also acidifies seawater. The recent increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has produced a significant increase in, of course, the acidity of the world's oceans. This increase could have devastating effects. For example, coral here is made of calcium carbonate. Uh, the calcium carbonate will react with the acid uh, to produce soluble compounds. And of course, coral reefs will gradually dissolve and crumble. Uh, sulfur trioxide is another reactant that could combine with water, and it makes sulfuric acid. So you can see here, not only element and element making compound, we can have compound and compound making larger compound. So the product of these previous two examples can, could be predicted by combining the two reactant formulas. However, sometimes it's a little more difficult um, to figure out what is in fact the product. Now again here I've outlined a few things in green indicating uh, um, things later on in the course, uh, research projects or doing one of the topics in more detail. And of course we also have a career component here as well. You, where you research careers associated with physical science 20. So of course environmental engineers concerned about reducing pollution, that is a definite career you could look at. Or uh, decomposition, pyrotechnics is a decomposition reaction, so you could look up uh, the career link for uh, a pyrotechnician if you like. Uh, so of course a lot of movies now use computer generated effects, but um, quite often there's still some ex real life explosives that are used and they are basically decomposition reactions. So for example TNT, trinitrotoluene, uh, C7H5NO2 all in brackets 3. Uh, it's a decomposition reaction. It's a little bit of energy is supplied and it breaks down into carbon, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, water and a huge amount of energy as seen here. So a chemical reaction in which one large compound breaks down or decomposes into two or more smaller substances is called a decomposition reaction. And you can see it looks like the opposite of a synthesis reaction. Synthesis, we had A and B giving AB. Decomposition, we have AB breaking down into A plus B. So compound breaking into elements or a really big compound breaking down into a series of compounds and elements. And of course, in order to initially be started, a small amount of energy needs to be added. For example, TNT, you need the match or you need an electric current uh, to initiate the, explosive, the explosion and then, of course, far much more energy is given off than needed to start that explosion. Now, predicting products of decomposition reactions, it's simple, it's easy if we have simple ionic compounds like KCl. KCl obviously breaks down into K and Cl. And of course, chlorine, be careful, one of the Hofbrink elements, it's Cl2, and of course that affects the balancing here. However, predicting the decomposition uh, products of most molecular compounds can be difficult. For example, KClO3, you may think it's KCl and O, but it actually is KCl and oxygen, so we have to be aware of that. It's not as easy as and uh, a compound in which we just simply have a metal and a non-metal together. Some decomposition reactions produce only compounds. For example, the intense heat of a Bunsen burner flame causes calcium carbonate to decompose into calcium oxide. 
and also carbon dioxide. So we can see that it doesn't necessarily break down into elements, it has two simpler compounds. Calcium oxide, also known as lime, is a key ingredient in cement. Industrial ki industrially kin kilns operating above 1400 degrees C are used to decompose limestone into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So you can see a real life application there. So in summary, um, looked at two types of reactions in this section. Synthesis reaction, two elements or two simple compounds combined to make one larger compound. And then decomposition reaction, one compound breaking down into two elements or a larger reactant breaking down into two or more simpler products. Okay? So the questions I need you to do and hand in um, number one, classify these reactions as synthesis or decomposition and tell me why you know. So justify your choice. Tell me why you think it's a synthesis or decomposition reaction. Don't forget to do that part of the question. It's a few people did. Uh, predict the products for these synthesis or decomposition reactions. Write the balanced chemical equation to represent each. Uh, I think there's a slight mistake here. The, this shows up as Z plus S in your book, so please add the N here. It's actually zinc plus sulfide. Sulfur gives you whatever you think it is. I'll give you a hint with C and F because they're a little more difficult. So ammonia and uh, hydrochloric acid makes ammonium chloride. So all you have to worry about is just balancing that reaction. Also here, magnesium hydroxide breaks down to give you water plus magnesium oxide. So there are a couple of the hints there. You just have to balance those ones. For the rest of these, uh, make sure you figure out the products and then balance it. Don't forget about the Hofbrink elements. Four, write a balanced chemical equation for each of these. So I think those are fairly straightforward. For part C, to give you a hint, there's two gases there that are products. So you may want to write that in there as a hint. Uh, number five, you don't have to do. Number six, you do. So here we have the question here. and. Uh, it continues on to this side here, so uh, don't get confused by that. Uh, question 7 deals with baking soda there. It's a nice little question. And then number 8, 9, 10 um, are not assigned. Just a little hint though, number 9 and 10, there are researches there that for later on in the course. One involves airbags using sodium, solid sodium azide. And uh, talking about earlier about cement kilns, uh, we can look at uh, using um, uh, tires basically for as fuel for cement kilns. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages of that? So you can look up that if you cho choose to. Okay, so the yellow highlighted questions, those are the ones you have to do, and uh, make sure you get the hints down. Okay, see you next time.